Anyway, Chase is back with the Blue Futon, and this is a movie I watched, and it's probably one of my first reviewed movies on the channel when I did it in Portugal, as God's will. He's never seen it. He wanted to watch it. Koshi Gamer finally saw it. We're going to find out if the gods were in his will house or not. Don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Synopsis go. As the gods will, you have bored Japanese teenager, bored with life. Then his life becomes a little less boring when his classmates' heads start exploding as a Dalarama doll, which is a red doll with eyes, you color their main, I think for luck. Either way, uh, they their heads start exploding, and the whole goal of the movie after that is to survive certain life or death challenges. And as the movie goes on and on, you figure out that this is some sort of competition made by a homeless looking dude to find what they call God's children. And all around the world, you see the adults are all starting to worship these kids that survive uh, these particular competitions. Um, I have read a fair bit of the manga past actually what this movie goes. And the movie does end a little bit uh, differently than the manga but this was a fun movie. I mean, you had a lot of gore, um, fantastic cheesy acting, really just, you know, your standard live action kind of Japanese movie. And uh, I don't know what else to say. It was just fun. Wow. Good good synopsis. Well, when I watched, reviewed it before, I enjoyed it. I'm pretty sure I gave it an 80% 4 out of 5 with futons. Right now, I'm probably at the same ranking. But the reason why we're also bringing this movie up back to life this movie did come out in 2014, and now it's starting to resurface a little bit. Why is that? Easy. Squid Games. Alice in Borderland. Those are finally, I want to say finally, but they're making a resurgence of like this type of filmmaking. As the Gods was kind of the same way. The first drama that he was talking about was Red Light, Green Light. The next game is kind of a cat and mouse game. Make a basketball cat and mouse. The next one is more of like a singing game. You gotta figure out who's behind you, who's the singer. And then the last, or the second to last one is a really awesome animated one. Yeah. It's the polar bear one. The way they decided to animate the polar bear scene is absolutely phenomenal. And I forgot about it, but then I rewatched it. I'm like, that is so cool. Why and how they decided to do that. Like 10 out of 10 animation mm -hmm. for that style. And of course, in the last one's kind of a kick the can. So why I'm bringing that up. This kind of same thing as Squid Games, Red Light, Green Light, the Marvel game. So they're thinking, is there a second one of this coming out? Because I'm pretty sure the manga is how long? Oh, manga, I think, I, I, last I checked, it's uh, at five volumes. Okay. I'm pretty sure this movie covers the first volume. I, I can't, you're going to have to fact check me on that. But uh, there's plenty of material to go with. And as he said, it's not like this wasn't already a genre. There's tons of animes on Netflix with this exact kind of alternate like augmented reality survival uh plot line there's tons of them out there uh so this is really nothing new but with squid games people have started going back to these types of movies and saying okay maybe we can make a little bit more money by making sequels to these i mean the material is already there they don't have to go much further than the, the manga adapted to film depending if they want to pay for it that is and uh, it should be an easy win for a lot of these companies. Anyway, if I had to say negative for this movie, if you do not know the source material, you're not going to understand some of the characters. The characters you're not going to understand. The weird Japanese guy in a room with his mom bringing him food with a lot of caution signs and like just weird anime pillows and posters in the room. You're not going to understand that plot line as well as the homeless man. So... There is negatives to this movie still about... It's sequel baiting, and you're not going to find out until they make the sequel if you're only going to watch the movie. Exactly. If you only watch the movie, you're going to be like, I don't understand that, I don't understand that. Which is interesting because the guy who directed this has like over 100 movies under his belt for directing. Like Terraformers, I have that one. I have, um, oh, what's it called? 13 Assassins. He remade that one. Over Your Dead Body. Like I have a lot of his movies, so I'm kind of shocked. That they haven't kind of, you know, got on the bandwagon of making this a sequel for this movie. But overall, 
The deaths are still as brutal as I remember it. Even though they're still goofy like the very first one. It is brutal but goofy. I still remember the third one with the stretching. is still the most brutal one. How they show it. Yeah. Oh, all the splits <laughs> one was bad. Yeah. Yeah, so, I can handle a lot of those like gore scenes. But whenever someone gets like pulled apart, that gets to me. Yeah, that one was... it. Because it's kind of weird because the second one, it's all goofy. Like, the first and second one are goofy deaths. You know, heads exploding into marbles, a cat eating mice. I guess I want to show off, but the third one kind of just kind of switches. And same with the fourth one. And the fourth one goes into, like, punching people till they're, like, till they're just hair. Yeah, I think I think the idea was, like, they either got turned into just paste and just they, they're, the tops of their heads remained or they were getting pushed into the ground. Or something like that. Yeah. But anyway, as God's will, it is still... A solid viewing the second time. And I think, like I said, the last time I reviewed it was in 2018, 2019. So three, two years later, it is still a solid four out of five of Futons. It is at 80%. Oh, I'm definitely probably going to give this one eight cans uh-huh. out of ten. So yeah, same score. Like I said, the only big, I, I actually think it is a big issue if you do not know the source material, you're not going to understand to the backstories, what the cubes are, why people are worshiping God's children. So it, it is kind of a fault like there. But anyway, let's see what the critics news scores gave this one. For this one, as the God's will, critics a 57% with seven of them. Audience score a 53% with over 100 of them. There's no critic consensus. I'm curious about what the critics are saying. I'm um, not. Oh, well, he's not. I mean, when you look at it, you know, 50-50% more critics are giving it a positive just because of the bonkersness of it. But I can't understand why it's a little bit lower just because how weird it is. But I feel like in today's day and age, with, you know, all these different movies coming out, I could see the score going higher just because it's not as weird. Even though it really never was. Okay, yeah, there are some weird stuff. It no, is, it's it's it's, it's, it's a weird, weird movie. Yeah. There, there's nothing to it. When this came out, it was weird. Nowadays, people have been uh, normalized by Squid Games, which is why you're seeing the resurgence. Again, that score probably could go 15% points higher. Yep. Anyway, the 80s, 57 or 53, Chase Luck with the Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about this Blue Futon Utopia. You Blue Futonians, thank you for watching and have a great day. The only game I think I might be able to survive would be the cat and mouse one. I think the only one I could survive is none of them. Yeah, we'd be we're not God's children.